Hello? Is there anyone out there? Hello? Mary? Mary, where are you? Hello, crew people who have never seen on stage. Anyone? Children? Children who hear my stories every week. Are you there, children? Children! I can hear you, but I cannot see you. My name is Boris Vincent. You may remember me from such movies as The School Lunch That Ate Up Houston. Remember that one? Children, I need help. I am so lost right now. I wanted to come out here, tell my story, and get home. But I took a wrong turn, and now I am lost. I am thirsty, I have to go to the bathroom, and if I don't get home soon, I will miss SpongeBob SquarePants. Maybe I should tell the story since you are here. Do you want to hear the story? You see, children, there was a great family of people known as the Israelites. They were God's chosen people, and they were trapped in slavery in the country of Egypt. God sent a man named Moses to save them, and he led them out of Egypt. But no sooner did they escape, the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, sent his army after them. Once again, they were trapped. On one side was the army of Egypt, and on the other was the Red Sea. But then... Dad! Dad, is that you? Mary! Over here! Where did you go? One minute you were behind me, and the next you were gone. Oh, Mary, I thought I was lost forever. Just like the Israelites when they were trapped between the sea and the army. But then, you showed up and saved the day. No, no, no. God showed up. He parted the waters of the Red Sea, and the Israelites escaped on dry land. God came through in an unexpected way for his people. That's a beautiful story, Mary. But I wasn't talking about them. I was talking about how you saved my day. Let me guess. It's almost time for SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, so we better get moving. Dad, don't you think it might ruin your reputation as a creepy movie person if people find out you watch SpongeBob? My dear, can you think of anything creepier than a burger-loving sponge in shorts and a tie? Hi, kids, and I miss Amy. How many times has the following situation happened in a movie you saw or a story you read? The heroes are trapped. The monsters, the bad guys, the dinosaurs are closing in on them. There's no escape. There's no way out. Our heroes are going to die. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, someone comes to the rescue. Maybe it's the police or uh, who have finally come to help. Maybe it's the army. Maybe it's a friend who had deserted or fled. One way or another, a miracle happens and our heroes are on their way to a happy ending. Some people, believe it or not, don't like those kinds of endings. They, they don't like that the happy ending comes out of nowhere. They want to see the heroes figure things out for themselves or die trying. But the reality is, sometimes we all need a miracle. Sometimes we've exhausted ourselves and run out of ideas. We can't save ourselves. We need a hand. We need someone to save us. Thankfully, we have a creator God who is full of surprises. We've read a few of those surprise stories already in this series. God surprised Nebuchadnezzar by protecting the boys in the fiery furnace. God protected Daniel from the lions by, putting, by shutting their mouths. Over and over, God does the unexpected, stepping in to save the day just when all seems lost. Now, I don't want to give away the ending before we read it, but something very similar happens at the end of this story. As we pick up the story in Exodus, God has led his people, the Israelites, out of slavery in Egypt, promising to take them to a new land. But no sooner than they leave, the king of Egypt decides he wants to capture them and bring them back. The people soon find themselves between a rock and a hard place, or in this case, an army and the sea. Exodus chapter 13, 17, through chapter 1431, Israel was trapped. There was nowhere to go. They would either drown in the sea or be taken down by the Egyptians. The people became angry with Moses, saying to him, Why would you lead us out here to die? Moses didn't lead them out of Egypt. God did. And God did not lead the people to the sea so they could die. God had a plan all along, and when the army of Egypt was upon the Israelites, God sprung a miracle. He parted the sea so that the Israelites could escape on dry land. God is a God of miracles. He loves surprises, and he loves to perform miracles to surprise us. The story of the Red Sea is one we all need to revisit from time to time, not just because it's the story of a great miracle, but because it's a story about keeping our faith in hard times. 
The children of Israel had just been freed from slavery. They saw God inflict the people of Egypt with 10 plagues just to let Pharaoh release them. They'd barely left home, but they'd already lost confidence that God would take care of them. God never left them, not even for a moment. He was always there waiting for just the right time. God wanted to show Israel and Egypt that he was in charge and nothing could stop his plans from unfolding. If you read on in Exodus and beyond, you'll see the Israelites were always losing faith and God was always reminding them he was their God. It's easy to judge them for their lack of faith, but we all go through times when we doubt God is there. We think our circumstances are too hard. We think there's nothing that can be done. Like the heroes in a scary story, we are trapped with no place to go. That's when God comes to the rescue. That's when he parts the Red Sea and comes in to save us. And there's nothing God can't come in and save us from. God has already saved us from sin. He saved us from the punishment of eternal death by sending Jesus to die for us. And if you believe in Jesus, nothing can take that salvation from you. Whatever hardship you're going through, have faith. Give it to Jesus and ask him to save you. God will surprise you and he will do it because he loves you. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for being our help in times of trouble. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week.